In this video, I'll be showing you how to clean your car properly without breaking your wallet. Hey guys, I'm Eric from Horaceworks and I wanted to make this video because I saw that there's a lot of confusion out there on how to perform a regular exterior clean on your car. What do you actually need to do to perform a regular clean? Believe it or not, some people go to this extent. They pre-soak, soak, decontaminate, wash, dry, polish, seal, wax, ceramic coat, which is absolutely crazy for a normal car wash. It's a crazy amount of time if you have any sort of a life and a crazy amount of money. Look, I mean, if you're a professional detailer, sure, you're going to do all of those steps as part of your regular day job. If you're prepping a car for Pebble Beach, go right ahead. But if you want to get real for a second and you've got a normal car, like this Focus over here, going to that extent every single time is very time consuming, not to mention very expensive in terms of car products. Now, this Focus really needs a bath as you can see. It's been heavily contaminated by the bushfires we've been having here in Australia, so it's a worthy candidate to use on this demonstration. Despite the absolute mess that this car is in, we'll be able to clean this up no problem at all. I'm going to show you how to keep your car looking great with regular washes that take about 30 to 45 minutes, not hours or days and just with a few simple products. Now, just to be clear, if you want your car looking amazing for years to come, you will need to perform regular waxing or ceramic coating about two to four times a year, depending upon your climate. This is not that video. This video is about keeping your car looking nice in between those waxes so that your car is in the best shape possible without eating up your day with a car wash and destroying your bank account in the process by overspending on car cleaning products. You don't have to break the bank to get good results. Let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about before we start is the two bucket method. A lot of people online recommend the two bucket method. So if you've got the two buckets, go ahead and use them. But I know that a lot of you don't have two buckets to wash your cars with. So for this demonstration, I'm going to use the one bucket method. For those of you who may only have the one bucket to use, you can achieve really good results just with the one bucket without damaging your paint. There are certain benefits to this. You're using less water and it's much easier to clean up and pack up afterwards because you only have one bucket to deal with. Let's talk about the tools you're going to need. In phase one, you will be cleaning the wheels and for this you need a wheel cleaner and any commercial wheel cleaner you find is good enough for this job. You don't need to spend a lot of money on premium wheel cleaners. Then you'll need a wheel brush and a separate wash mitt just for washing your wheels if you can spare it. If not, just use the brush and the wheel cleaner solution. In phase two, you will be using a regular five gallon bucket or just a large bucket with two grit traps placed inside. I'll explain later why you'll need two grit traps and of course, your car shampoo. Again, this shampoo does not need to be fancy or expensive, just something that is designed to be used on cars. And finally, a wash mitt. Do not use the same wash mitt that you will be using on your wheels though. In phase three, you will be using several microfiber towels. Four to six should do the job, depending on what quality and size towels you have. And a decent quick detail spray. It's in this phase that you'll want to spend a little bit more to make sure that the solution you use contains a great quality wax. Save your money on the wheel cleaner and the car shampoo and spend a bit on this final detailing wash and wax solution because this is the final coating of your wash and will be the one exposed to the elements. You'll want it to contain good quality wax to protect the paint as you drive around. So there it is, one bucket, two grid traps, a wheel brush, two wash mitts, wheel cleaning solution, car shampoo, a good quick detail spray and four to six microfiber towels will get your car looking amazing. You do not need anything else. Let me show you how it's done, starting with the first phase, cleaning your wheels. So the first place to always start when washing a car is the wheels. They are the dirtiest part of the car and you don't want to wash the rest of the car and then get to the wheels only to have the dirt that was on the wheels splash onto the rest of the car. So always start here. What you're going to want to do is grab a hose and just rinse off all the four wheels and let them dry. This removes all the excess dirt that would just come off naturally. Once your wheels are fairly dry, grab your wheel cleaning solution and spray it on liberally. Wait a few moments for the solution to do its work, then grab your wheel brush and start working the brush into all the spokes. Now these wheel brushes are fairly good but they do have a couple of faults. One is that this end cap can fall off after after a while and if that happens it's hiding a very sharp metal end so as you're washing your wheels you're running the risk of scratching your wheels if you don't keep an eye on this cap now I prefer these wash mitts to wash the face of my wheel because there's no chance of scratching it's double-sided a coarse and a fine side with the fine side used to wash the face of the wheel and the coarse side used to wash things like the tires or your inner guards and if I want to I can use my fingers to get into all the crevices the lug nuts and the wheel cap so with all that said here is a quick time lapse of washing the wheels on this focus.
Now take a look at that, that is the before and after shot and as you can see we've made quite a difference to the wheels. And with one wheel done, it's time to move on to the rest to finish up phase 1. Don't forget your safety glasses in this phase. This wheel brush unfortunately sprays a lot of dirt and muck right into you as you pull it out of the wheel. Here, just take a look at my knee right afterwards. It's also another reason why I prefer the wash mitt, although to be fair, you cannot reach as far in with a wash mitt as you do with the wheel brush. This is the only reason I recommend that you use both. Okay, quickly moving on to the other side of the car, I'm just going to finish off washing the other two wheels. Really, phase one, washing the wheels should only take you about 5 to 10 minutes max. Alright, let's let them dry and in the meantime, let's move on to phase two, washing the actual car. When selecting the bucket to clean your car with, make sure you pick a bright colour. I've chosen white for a very specific reason. Here, just take a look at this. I haven't even used it yet, but just from sitting around for the last few minutes, you can clearly see the dirt at the bottom of the bucket, so pick something right so that you've got a good chance of keeping the bucket clean when it comes time to wash it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using two grid traps for this method of washing the car and I'll go through now why I'm using two grid traps. So you'll notice that I'm using two types of grit traps actually. The first type is this very fine pinhole type of grit trap which basically just contains a bunch of circular holes. Now what this does is it keeps the fine dirt particles away from your wash mitt. So as you put your wash mitt in, this one stops all the fine particles from floating back up into the water as you create a wake with your wash mitt. You know, as you can imagine, you know, you, you're dunking the water, you're displacing the water as you're putting your hand inside the bucket and all that fine dirt can quite easily float around. This type of grit trap stops the fine particles from floating back up into the rest of the water. It keeps all that fine dirt away. Now, one thing it can't do is it can't allow for larger particles to float underneath the, the grit trap because the holes are too small. So what you want to do in this case is put a second type of grit trap on top which basically allows the finer particles to float through and it traps those larger particles and stops them from coming back up. Now some of you might be thinking why not just use the second type of grit trap and just use the one which lets through the fine particles and the larger particles. The problem with just using this one is that the gaps are way too large. It allows the fine particles lodged at the bottom of the bucket to flow back up through the water as you create a wake with a wash mitt as you put it in the bucket. So the pinhole type is for keeping the fine dirt away, whereas the larger type is for keeping any leaves or any other larger particles away. And with this method, you'll basically be able to wash your car using just the one bucket because you're quite protected from any dirt floating back up into your wash mitt and running the risk of scratching your paint. These grit traps are quite cheap, they're only a few dollars each and it's quite a worthy investment to make sure that you don't end up scratching your paint. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to pick a few up for yourself. Don't cheap out, make sure you get a few of these to use in your buckets, especially if you're only using the one bucket to wash your car. Alright, I think that's enough about grit traps, let's get on with washing this car. So when washing the car, you'll want to do it in phases. Start with the roof, followed by the windows, above the trim line and below the trim line. This will make sure that you'll wash the cleanest part of the car first and the dirtiest part of the car last. You'll want to do this to keep your wash mitt as clean as possible during the wash. But before any of that, let's rinse the car down with water. Now that the car is nice and wet, take your wash mitt and start washing the roof line very thoroughly. Get into all the little nooks and crannies. Then grab your hose and be really thorough. Give everything a nice good rinse. And once the roof line has been washed clean, follow through by giving the window line a thorough soaking. Then grab your wash mitt and go ahead and wash down all the windows, wipers, review mirrors. And then again, starting from the top of the car, follow through and wash downwards, washing all the windows thoroughly. And once that's done, follow through and wet the body of the car, then grab your wash mitt and start washing the body of the car above the trim line. I'm doing one side at a time, rinsing, then doing the other side, just because I'm in direct sun and I don't want the car to dry. So once that's done, again a nice rinse starting from the top down, wet the bottom of the car below the trim line and again wash one side of the car.
rinse then wash the other side of the car and if you've got any water and detergent left over in the bucket, go ahead and wash each wheel separately. You're pretty much done with the wash mitt now, so don't be afraid to use it on the wheels. They should be pretty clean anyway. You've washed them in the first phase. Give everything a final rinse from top down, and that's it. The car is washed. Alright, your car is nice and clean, it's on to phase 3. And the first thing you'll need to do is dry it. So if you can, pull your car into the shade for this, just so that the sun doesn't work against you. And what I mean by that, is you don't want the sun to dry your car. It will leave watermarks. If this isn't an option for you, that's okay, just work quickly. But since I've got the garage here, I'm going to pull the car into the garage and dry the car off there. Grab one of the microfiber towels you prepared earlier and just like during the wash, start from the top and slowly work your way around, getting rid of all the water that's accumulated on the car. Rinse your microfiber towel thoroughly and check if there is any dirt left behind. Going through the rest of the process, so you're starting from the roof, working around the glass, get your wipers, get your mirrors, then work above the trim line all the way around then below the trim line and then start drying all the extremities starting with things like your bumper trim, your exhaust, your wheels, your door crevices, boot crevice and finally the engine bay. You'll want to clean this as well but leave it last because there's likely to be extra dirt and grease accumulated there. Once you're done with that, your microfiber towel will pretty much be shagged and ready for a wash but your results should speak for themselves. Take a look, not a speck of dirt left but we're not quite done yet. Let's move on to the last step. And hey, just before we go any further, congrats for making it this far, we're almost done. Hit the like button if you like what you're seeing. Alright, so if you remember, what you want to do is have a really good quality quick detailing product such as this quick wax and it's this final coating that will be exposed to the elements before you wash your car again. So you want it to be good quality. So you'll be using two microfiber towels here but make sure you swap them often if they get dirty. Use the first to apply the spray and rub it in and then use the second to give the car a final once over. The reason you're using two towels is that the first one gets quite wet from the spray and may not allow you to completely dry the car and polish it to its final level of shine. So you'll want a second towel that's clean and dry. Alright, it's time lapse time. And with that guys, the car clean video is done. Just check out these before and after shots. I hope I've managed to show you that you don't need to break the bank to get good results with a regular car wash. I hope you like what you saw, and more importantly, like me, I hope you've learned something new today. If you agree, please let me know by giving this video a like. So as a recap, you'll wash the car in three phases. In the first phase, you're tackling the wheels, and you always want to do this because it's the dirtiest part of the car. Secondly, you'll wash the car itself, and in the third phase, you'll dry it and you'll apply some quick detailer to keep your paint protected. Did I miss something? Do you have anything to add? Feel free to leave a comment below. I always welcome constructive feedback. And if you'd like to see more content from the channel, please subscribe and click the bell so that you'll know when I post up something new. Now enough chit chat, go ahead and try this yourself on your car.